if you go north from here, cross over into the mountains, you'll find a path. And then if you go down that path, you'll come to a hollow. You take that path into the hollow and the grass starts getting deeper. And if you go along long enough and you get there before it gets dark and the critters start flying, you'll find a cabin. Nobody lives there now. But a long, long time ago, there was a woman named Marissa who lived there. Now, Marissa was born in that cabin. So was her daddy. And so was her granddaddy. And so was her great-granddaddy. And one day, Marissa was out looking for some food, digging around in the leaves, and she found a big, hairy toe. When she saw this toe, she was filled with delight. She very carefully and cautiously dug around it, pulled it up, and put it in her basket. On the way home, she began to think of what she could do with it. And it occurred to her that that night, she could make some delicious hairy toast stew. She built a big fire in the fireplace and she got out her very favorite kettle, filled it with water, added just a few special spices, and sunk the toe in the pot. It boiled and smoked and steamed and the aroma of hairy toast stew filled the whole cabin. She took that toe out, cut it up, and ate every bit of it. It was the best hairy toe stew Marissa had ever put in her mouth. The sun set, the moon and the stars came out. Marissa was tired from a long day of work, so she lay down in the bed. She drifted off to sleep, and a cloud drifted over the moon. It got so dark that you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. The wind started to blow, and the coyotes started howling, and the crickets were chirping, and the frogs were croaking. Marissa was tossing and turning, and just as all that, she heard a voice, and the voice said, I want my big, hairy toe. She raised her eyes, her heart started racing, she listened a little closer. I want my big, hairy toe. She heard it again. It sounded like it was way off, and she thought if she just covered her ears, it would go away covered her head under the pillow and pulled the covers up tight around her neck and tried to breathe deep and not panic. Her heart was racing so hard, but then she heard it again and she was sure what it was. The voice said, I want my big hairy toe. She tossed and she turned and she tried to sleep. She couldn't do it. The curtains began to blow and she jumped up and closed the window and she went to the front door and barred the door and just as she barred the front door, the voice was even closer. It sounded like it was coming right from the garden, right outside her house. Give me my big hairy toe. She ran back and she jumped in the bed and just as she jumped in, she heard boards on the front porch creaking and she heard the voice again. I want my big hairy toe. Before she could do anything, she heard that front door explode like a bomb. Splinters were flying everywhere. She tried to run, but it was no use. She saw this big shadow standing right in the doorway. All it could say was, 
I want my big hairy toe. Marissa was so scared she dove out a window and began to run. The voice disappeared. The neighbors all came because it was a long time and they didn't see Marissa. Nobody's seen her since. The only thing they found was a footprint right in the mud, right on her front porch, right off her front porch. And that footprint only had four toes. Good afternoon, I'm Jeff White, and I am a funeral director here in Greer, and I'm also, as a hobby, a storyteller. And a lot of people want to know if, um, how you get to be a storyteller. And I think I came by it um, through inheritance. My father was a storyteller and did a lot of storytelling. My grandfather was also a storyteller. So I like to say that I'm a third generation storyteller. It's something I enjoy doing because it's easy and it's an expression of how things used to be and it helps us match up with how things are now. And that's very important to me.